Good morning. Good morning. Turn, turn back with me, if you will, please, to 2 Corinthians chapter number 4. I have a confession to make. When we finished last week with uh, looking at things that are eternal, I knew the lesson was done. I also knew I had to have a lesson for this week. And I was dead in the water, no leadership, cold, prayed all week, lying in bed Friday night knowing I had to get up Saturday and study for a lesson. I said, Lord, it was just as clear as the nose on my face. You wanted me to look at things that were eternal in that verse. I had clear leadership and now I'm just nowhere. And it felt like I could feel the Spirit saying, that verse also talks about temporal things. So Lord willing, we're going to look at things that are temporary today. Look at 2 Corinthians 4, verse 18. This is our launching space, or our launching verse. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. And we know that means temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. So for the last two weeks, we looked at things that are eternal. And we began with God himself. But now we're going to, date, Lord willing, we're going to look at things which are temporal. Things that are temporal. And we know, of course, that means temporary. But I want to show it to you in some other verses to, to get our mindset. Look at Matthew 13. Matthew 13, verse number 21. This word translated temporal is used four times in the scripture. Matthew 13, in the New Testament. Matthew 13, verse number 21. Yet hath he not root in himself, but, here's the phrase, dureth for a while. That's the same word, temporal. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. So things that are seen that are temporal, they dureth for a while. Look at Mark chapter number 4. Mark chapter number 4. <coughs> Verse number 17. Mark 4, verse number 17. And have no root in themselves, and so endure but for a time. Afterward, when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. It's translated into English here a little bit differently, but it says, but uh, endure but for a time. Hebrews 11, 25. Here's the, the fourth time that it's used. It appears in the uh, Greek, Hebrews 11, verse number 25. Speaking of Moses, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of, season, of sin for how long? Season. For a season. Temporarily. So what things are temporal? Our verse tells us, number one, there are things that we can see. And if you'll remember what we studied about things that are eternal, God's eternal, his kingdom's eternal. His love is eternal. His kindness is everlasting. He grants eternal life. It, that was all on a spiritual plane. Those are things that you can't see with the natural eye. So what is temporary? Or what are temporary? Everything that's natural. In time and space and natural life. Things that are seen are temporary. Everything that is natural. We read about God's spiritual kingdom. Let me ask you about man's kingdoms. How many have there been? Countless, right? Even the great nations of the Bible, where are they now? Where are the Aztecs? Where are the Babylonians? They came and they what? They endured for a while. They lasted a season, but they're gone. So all the kingdoms of the world all natural kingdoms are temporary. Look at Daniel chapter number 2. Daniel chapter number 2. 
Verse number 44. Daniel 2, 44. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. I stand on scriptural ground to tell you every kingdom save one is temporary. Only God's kingdom is eternal. Look at Hebrews chapter number 12. Hebrews chapter number 12. How many presidents have you seen in your lifetime? How many bosses have you had? How many tyrants have we seen come and go? How many preachers have been in your life? Kingdoms, authorities, leadership in the natural realm are always temporary. Hebrews 12, look at verses 27 through 29. And this word yet once more signifieth the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. So all natural kingdoms, and that's all natural authorities and societies, are temporary. And then I got to thinking on this verse, it says, we see the things that are temporary. So what, what does that mean? I believe every object and possession is temporary. If it exists in time and space, it's temporary. Look at Matthew chapter number 6. I could ask you the same question I asked you about kingdoms. Some of the younger people probably could answer this to yes, but do you live in the house that either you were born in or your parents brought you home from the hospital to? How many of you are driving your first car? Folks, in this world and in time and space, nothing lasts forever. Only in the spiritual realm. Only through God are, is anything eternal. Look at Matthew 6, verses 19 through 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where the thieves do not break through nor still, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I can tell you something about your objects and your possessions. They're going to age. And they're liable to be stolen. They don't last forever. They do not last forever. Look at 1 Timothy chapter number 6. 1 Timothy... Chapter number 6. And we're going to begin with verse number 17. 1 Timothy 6, verse number 17. Charge them that are, that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded, nor trust in what kind of riches? Uncertain. But in the living God who giveth us all richly, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Let's continue to reading because there's an interesting how this turns. That they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on what kind of life? You need to use the natural and the temporary for eternal purposes. You need to be a good steward of objects and possessions. Use them for good. Folks, Owning anything is not a sin. Having something is not wrong. As long as you possess it and it doesn't possess you. Use it for good. And use it with an eternal thought 
in mind. I like that. It goes up to, it ends up talking about something eternal and talking about all these uncertain riches. Proverbs 23. Proverbs chapter number 23. Verses 4 and 5. Labor not to be rich. Cease from thine own wisdom. Will thou set thine eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. And what do they do? As an eagle toward heaven. Riches can fly away. I've heard people say it all my life, and I finally lived long enough to experience it too. Uh, the more you get, the more it takes. You get a bonus at work and everything's great and you, you've got all these big plans, maybe kind of selfish motivated and your car breaks down. God has provided that for you, but the more you get, the more it takes. Riches fly away. Riches fly away. They're temporary. They're temporary. Possessions and things are to be enjoyed. We're to be good stewards of them. We're to use them for good. Because there is a danger. Look at Matthew 19. Y'all probably have already thought of this. Matthew 19. And verse number 22. Remember the rich young ruler. Matthew 19, verse number 22. Jesus told him what he needed to do. But notice his reaction. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. I want to remind you what he asked for. Look at verse number 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have what kind of life? He missed it based on that which is natural and temporary. Wasn't going to last. Wasn't going to last. But when he heard that, he was sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Although, and let me make a point, though, because this is, this is also clear in the Scripture. Although temporary, possessions can outlast their owners. Their owners. Look at Luke 12. Remember the man who built all those barns? Luke 12. Yes, possessions are temporary, but sometimes they can outlast the owners. Luke 12, and let's read uh, 15 through 21. Luke 12, 15 through 21. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? His possessions outlasted him. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Look at Psalm 49. We don't need to jump on this man's case and point our finger because it's a human tendency. It is a natural tendency in the flesh. Look at Psalm 49. Verse number 6. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, that's who we're speaking of. Now let's go down to verses 10 through 12. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise the fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Their inward thought is that their houses shall continue forever, and their dwelling places to all generations. They call their lands after their own names. Nevertheless, man being in honor abideth not, he is like the beasts that perish. Look at verse 17. For when he dieth, he shall carry nothing away. His glory shall not descend after him. What was it Job said? Naked I came into this world, 
You don't take anything with you when you leave. Yes, possessions are temporary. Riches have wings that can fly away, but sometimes they outlast their possessors. But being a good steward of that, you know what Proverbs 13, 22 says? You know, uh, we won't turn there for time's sake. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. That's being a good steward. But possessions are temporary. And we looked at these verses and it says, you know what? The, uh, God told the rich man, your soul is going to be required of you. The, psalm, the psalmist tells us we think everything's going to last forever, but we die. That's the, that's the next thing we want to look at. Kingdoms are temporary. Objects and possessions are temporary. Guess what? Natural life is temporary. We're not talking about eternal spiritual life, knowing Christ Jesus and God. As we saw the, uh, last week, John 17, 3, we're talking about natural life and time and space. And folks, that's for the wicked and for the righteous. Natural life is temporary. Look at James 4, 14. The book of James 4, verse number 14. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for how long? And then vanisheth away. Folks, those who die and who live to be triple digits, their life still vanisheth away for a little time. And don't we all think when we think about where we are right now, we got here pretty fast, didn't we? It's going by fast. Suddenly, we're this age. Suddenly, when you think about it, natural life, no one lives upon the earth in time and space forever. Now, when God establishes the new heaven and the new earth and puts his kingdom there, that's a different story. But in natural time and space, no one lives forever. Look at Psalm 37. Psalm 37. We need to be mindful of these things. We need to remember these things. Why? So we can be good stewards. So we can look for the eternal. So that we can use things that are natural and temporal for the good of others and for the glory of God. Psalm 37, verse number 10. For yet a little while, and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. There, speaking specifically of the wicked. In a little while, he's not going to be there. Turn to the, uh, to the previous book, Job. Job, chapter number 7. Verses 7 through 10. Oh, remember that my life is wind, mine eyes shall no more see good. The eye of him that hath seen me shall see me no more. Thine eyes are upon me, and I am not. As the cloud is consumed and vanished the way, so he that goeth down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, neither shall his place know him any more. Natural life is temporary. All right, turn to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Chapter number 3. Verse number 19. Ecclesiastes 3. Verse number 19. For that which befalleth the sons of men befalleth beasts. Even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. Everyone dies in time and space, in natural life. Look at Hebrews chapter number 9. Let's see it in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter number 9.
and verse number 27. And it is appointed unto man once to what? But after this, the judgment. It's appointed man once to die. Look at 1 Corinthians 15. It has been so since the first man. It has been so since the first man. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 22. For as in Adam, how many die? Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So in Adam, all die. Natural life is temporary. Folks, we as believers need to always be mindful of that. I think it's wise to prepare for the future. I think it's wise to prepare for eternity. But we need to remember, natural life is temporary. That brings me to another thought. It's funny. Possessions brought us to thinking about natural life. Natural life, let me tell you something else that's temporary. And it kind of blows my mind because I can't really get my mind around it. But time is temporary. Time is temporary. Look at Revelation chapter number 10. Revelation chapter number 10. Time, history, natural existence is temporary. Revelation 10 and verse number 6. And swear by him that liveth forever and ever, who created heaven and the things that, are there, that therein are, and the earth and the things that therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein are, that there should be time, what? There will be a last tick of the clock. The permanent clock. Man's measure of time. I've, had, I've heard one man say, and I've, I've chewed on it for a long time, he says, in glory and in eternity we will live in the eternal now. And I think about God always describes himself in the present tense. So you know what I think about our, our verse in, uh, that we sing in Amazing Grace? When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we've just begun. In principle, that's right. But there's not going to be any 10,000 years. You're not going to think about, well, you know, one million years ago when the Lord called me home. We're all going to live in the present. Time shall be no more. Kind of blows my mind. 1 Corinthians 7. But why, so, the, so the time we're living in now is temporary. And Paul himself says, calls it short. 1 Corinthians 7, verse number 29. And he's here, he's speaking about marrying and stuff, but I want to get this thought. But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both that they have wives be as though they had none, and so on. But he says, the time is short. Folks, we need to be about the Father's business, and we need to be good stewards of time. You know what the scripture calls it? Redeeming the time. Rede and let's see that. Ephesians chapter number 5. Ephesians chapter number 5. Verse number 16. Ephesians 5. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Uh, look at Colossians. Go over. He uses the same phrase in Colossians. Colossians 4, verse number 5. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Now, I like that. This is speaking to believers, and you need to walk in wisdom toward them that are without. Redeeming the time. Use your time wisely. Be about the Father's business. Be good stewards. There's not a thing wrong in essence, with anything natural. But we need to be good stewards of them. Use the possessions. Use your natural life. Use time. Even use the natural kingdoms of the earth for the glory of God and for the good of others. Be good stewards of them. Don't have to apologize for that. But listen, don't set your hearts upon them 
and don't expect them to last forever. They are not eternal. Natural kingdoms and natural authorities and natural societies are not eternal. Objects and, and possessions and riches are not eternal. Natural life is not eternal. And folks, time is not eternal. Our hope is in someone who is eternal. Our hope is in someone who loves everlastingly. Our hope is in one who grants eternal life. Our hope is in the one who created time and will br bring it to an end. Time is in him. He's not in time. So if we're in him, we don't have to worry about not being in time because we're in him. So those are things eternal. Those are things that are temporary. I hope these have given you a uh, reason to think. And I hope we will never get caught up thinking our life uh, consists of all these things that are in abundance or our possessions. Not in anything that is temporary. Folks, our relationships are temporary in this earth. Mom and dad, you have to raise them and turn them loose in the world. Sometimes we go down to the cemetery and bury the body, and that part of it is over. It's all temporary. But that doesn't mean it's the end of anything or whatever. We do have eternal things which are not seen. And there are gifts and our graces and our blessings from Almighty God.